Hiya everyone, this is Anatic the Shoujo Nut, and today I am going to react to the next Archon Crest as of the time of this uploading. It's called The Crane Returns on the Wind. So I'm going to continue here because this is where I left off and I'm pretty up to date on the game in terms of the story. So let's see what happens. I haven't been spoiled. I haven't seen anything. So this will be a huge surprise to me. Oh, and I got Yunjin, so. <laughs> okay. I have gathered everyone here today to make an important announcement. Perhaps some of you will have heard the news already. I am, in fact, planning to rebuild the Jade Chamber. Whoa. Rebuild the Jade Chamber? That's a huge project! So the rumors are true. No wonder the price of building materials has gone up so much lately. Oh, gosh. The Jade Chamber means a lot to Lady Ningguang. Getting involved in this would oh be a God. huge opportunity. What an opportunist. Lady Ningguang! Is there any way we can be of service? Patience. Since the news made it out a few days ago, I have already had many people contacting me to declare an interest in joining of the course. project. Nevertheless, I do have a few matters I should like to entrust to you here today. Mm. The building site has been chosen, and most of the materials have been assembled. Three key items are, however, still outstanding. They are as follows. Sunset Vermilionite, Wonder Cores, and Adepti Sigils. <laughs> that lady's like, I have no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> uh, excuse my ignorance, Lady Ningguang. I, I'm familiar enough with Plostrite, <laughs> but I've never even heard of those other two. Only sufficiently large pieces of Plostrite. Or specifically, Vermilionite may earn themselves the sunset moniker. This stone is what allows the Jade Chamber to float. Oh, wow. Wonder cores, meanwhile, are the central components of the mechanical structure of the Jade Chamber. Adepti sigils serve as a means of integrating the mechanical devices with Adepti art. They are as indispensable as the mechanical core itself. Although these three items are rare, I trust that with your connections and capabilities, procuring them will not be a question of if, but of when. People of Liyue are very uh, resourceful, so... I take the saying, time is money, more seriously than most. Hmm. Efficiency is everything. I will pay a generous price for the materials that you find. And in addition, the first three people who collect all the materials will have the opportunity to ask me a question. Oh my god, he's smiling. You may ask me anything, and I will Ooh. give you an honest answer. I trust that this means of compensation will be to everyone's satisfaction. That's a pretty juicy offer. These things won't be easy to get hold of, but if it means a chance to get some inside information on Liyuet Harbor's development plan for next year... Okay, they go in that then, direction. It's the deal of a lifetime. Information from Lady Ningguang is priceless. Okay. Whoever gets to. Haha, <laughs> what a coincidence! I won't divulge too much, but I heard some murmurings about some plot strike just the other day. So excuse me all, but, um. I have. I love how they went into business. Oh, no. We better move quickly, or this opportunity will be snatched away from us. And my mind went somewhere. House. Ningguang's rebuilding the Jade Chamber? This is a huge deal! Let's get involved! Oh god. So you heard my announcement, did you? What do you think? Interested? <laughs> yes. Providing the question pertains to something I am knowledgeable about. Maybe I can find out more about my brother. Yeah. Really? Ooh, then Paimon will ask you about how to run a business! Oh my god, Paimon. Are you trying to open a restaurant? <laughs> then we'll never be short of more oh. ever again! <laughs> it's money, not food this time. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course. But the construction of the Jade Chamber requires a great deal of space. Mm. The abandoned mine outside the Golden House has been selected as the building. I have other business to attend to now. 
Otherwise, I would gladly escort you to the site in person. When you do arrive, please, seek out my secretary. Remember, this is a race against the clock. A rare opportunity presents itself to you. Do not let somebody else snatch it from your grasp. Ningguang seems super busy. Come on, we'd better get going. First, we gotta get out of Eugene Terrace. Uh, huh? Look! Oh! It seems like there's something kind of fishy going on over there. Oh, who is that? Ma'am, you seem like an eminent and distinguished young lady to me. I can see that you're easily gonna win this procurement contest Lady Dingguang has set up. As it happens, we have some information about the materials that I really think might interest you. Come on, let's find somewhere a little more private, and we can get down to brass tacks. Suspect? No, I don't need it. Ah, uh, don't be like that. Hey, come on, don't go! Oh my god, men are aggressive. Why don't you stand there after her? Oh my god. <sighs> oh my god. Oh, right, yeah. So... Did you hear that? They said they had some useful information! Information's just what we need right now. Let's follow them and see what we can find out. Hopefully we don't need to rescue Shen her like how um, Tatalia rescued us. Huh. Ooh. Huh. I need some of this. Anyways. <laughs> well, will you look at that, ma'am? Nowhere left to run. Don't worry, we're not bad guys. You give us some mora, we give you a little info. Everybody's a winner. Is it just me or am I the only one whose mind was in the gutter? Boss, I got a bad feeling about this. Look at her, the, the white hair, the, the energy she gives off. I, I'm telling you, there, there's something different about her. You think? So what? She's loaded. How are we ever going to repay those gambling debts if we just let money walk away from us, huh? I've already told you. I don't need your information. Uh, Shenhood, I don't think... Okay, whatever. <laughs> if you still can't grasp that, I'm happy to repeat it in a way that won't be so easy to forget. Uh, come on, ma'am. You seem like an intelligent lady. I shouldn't have to spell this out to you. It's not about whether you need the info or not, okay? It's about you taking out your money and handing it over and nobody getting hurt. I won't. No more excuses. <sighs> I know you have money. I saw you. Yeah, I saw you. Strolling into Leo Leap and Shinue Kiosk, then Wanmin Restaurant. Same story each time. You order all the signature dishes, take a few bites, then you're on your way again. So, you're a stalker. How could you afford to be so wasteful if you weren't from a rich family? And since you're so rich, what's the loss to you in giving us a little spare change, huh? <sighs> Master warned me not to lay a hand on anyone in Liyue Harbor. We can make an exception. <sighs> but here we are. Hmm. Perhaps... Uh, yes. Let's call it fate. Boss, I'm telling you, something's not right. What are you afraid of? We're just selling information. It's not illegal. If she lays a finger on us, all the better. We'll sue her for everything she's worth. Oh, you again. The Melalyn. What, what, what are the Melalyn doing here? Did you do this? <clears throat> you ought to mind your own business. Silence. How dare you threaten innocent civilians? You're coming with us. Bye. <laughs> no, no, don't, 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 don't be angry, sir. P p p please, let me explain. Hmm. <sighs> that was easy. We didn't even have to fight them. 
Are you all right? Shen He. Shen He? My name. Oh, so your name's Shen He. Paimon's name is, well, Paimon. And this is Paimon's travel buddy. An Eric. Oh, I've heard about you two before. <sighs> Thank you for helping to defuse the situation. Uh, I could have dealt with it myself, though. I suspect smashing his head against the ground a handful of times is all it would have taken to get him to surrender. I like this lady. <gasps> you, you can't do that. That's way too violent. Who says? This is Leela Harbor. There are laws against that kind of stuff, you know? Oh, right. Laws. Laws. <laughs> she reacted the same way as me. Have you not heard of the law, Shen He? <laughs> no, apparently not. Really? So how exactly have... <sighs> that would be my stomach growling. Hmm, I haven't eaten enough. She's so honest. <laughs> Wait, that's right. They said you went around all the restaurants ordering this and that and the other, but only took a small bite of each dish. Maybe she's just picky. Then of course you're still hungry. So... Anything in particular you're hungry for? Hmm. Chingson, glaze lily, violet grass. These are my usuals. Oh. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of um, Chinese herbal medicine. Interesting. Hmm. Medicinal herbs? Kinda hard to explain. Mm. Anyway, Boo Boo Pharmacy's not far away. Let's take Shenha there for a big medicinal meal. It's like literally right there. After all, you can't work on an empty stomach. Bye, Monchino. Psst. Do you think Shenha might be an adeptus? It seems like it's her first time in Liyue Harbor, and she doesn't seem to get how things work here. If she is an adeptus, that would explain everything. Mm-hmm. But she's not. Are you here to buy Spoiler some herbs? Alert. I do hope you brought your prescription. Chingson, glaze lily, and violet grass, please. Half a pound of each. What kind of prescription is this? Sounds more like a lunch order. <laughs> oh, here you go. That's everything we have in stock. Thank you. She's really... Oh, wow. <sighs> My hunger has now abated. Thank you. <laughs> so, how did they taste? <laughs> mm, rather awful. <laughs> uh. Though they were not completely devoid of sweet fragrance, after consuming a large quantity of them, bitterness is all that remains. Mm. So, how can you chow down on these and barely touch the restaurant food? Maybe too much seasoning? If Paimon had enough, Mora, Paimon would go to the fanciest restaurant in town and order a whole table of food and eat it all in one go. Oh, God, that's me. Because I'm not sure whether I will remain here in the future. Oh. The food of the mortal realm is most delicious. But should I return to the mountains, yearning for the food here shall only pose an obstacle to my continued spiritual development. Oh, wow, I am getting... um. A lot of, like, Buddhist themes going on here. Taoism, stuff like that. Where you know how the monks in the mountain have to eat certain type of food to nourish themselves. But at the same time, they have to, um, like, not eat the same type of food we eat. Like, they don't eat meat, they don't drink alcohol. They do like that in order to reach enlightenment and stuff like that. And to keep their body pure. Is that what's going on? Sampling each dish in order to appreciate its taste is enough. Return to the mountains. That proves it. Paimon knew she was an adeptus. Mm, enough about me. What are your plans from here? Oh, right. Paimon almost forgot. We came out to take part in the Rebuild the Jade Chamber Cup and... And now we're probably super behind because we've been held up for so long. Nah. Hmm, I see. I heard something about the contest when I was passing by. <laughs> yep! You get to ask Ningguang any question you want if you win! Were you interested in the contest too, Shenha? Hmm, 
I came for the rebuilding of the Jade Chamber, but until this point I had no intention of joining a contest. However, you have shown me your kindness, and I would now like to lend you my assistance. Oh, don't worry. I ask for nothing in return. I mean, spending time with a beautiful lady is its own something in return, you know? Wow! You really don't have to, but having an Adeptus help out will make things a whole lot easier, so... Sure, let's join forces. Then let's not delay. I have a plan. Great! Paimon bets this is gonna be the awesomest plan ever! Mm, I am not sure whether or to what extent this plan can be classified as awesome. I do, however, believe it will be highly effective. We simply need to dispose of everyone who is currently <laughs> ahead of us. Then, we alone shall become the victors. <laughs> oh my god. I thought you and I are alike, man, but... Shenhu and I might be kind of alike, too. <laughs> Ooh. Vito! That is not acceptable! Not by a long shot! Uh, 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 don't veto for me, Paimon! Really? <laughs> But I hear that competition is, in essence, about conflict and one-upmanship. Mm. Look, we want to win this competition fair and square, okay? I guess this is Lumine's journey, not my journey. <laughs> Sunset Vermilion Knight, Wonder Course, and Adepti Sigils. Let's start at the top of the list and work down. So, for plus strike... I was wondering who I could hear arguing <gasps> over there. So, hi there. It's you. Bye, you. What are you doing hi, out Snakey. here? Lady Ningguang wishes to purchase a large batch of wound dressing. We're running low at the store, so I came out to fetch the ingredients personally. Huh? How come Lady Ningguang needs so much wound dressing all of a sudden? Good question. I'm not too sure. I did hear she's looking to rebuild the Jade Chamber. Maybe for its first aid on site? I didn't ask, though. Far be it from me to pry into my customer's personal affairs. The way he speaks is very unique. There's something about his tonation. Oh, and she also borrowed Chi-Chi. Of course. Meaning Boo Boo Pharmacy is very short-handed right now. Oh my I don't God. suppose any of you are looking for part-time work by any chance? How come we are everybody's errand boy? No, no. We've got other stuff to do. Oh, thank God. Um, while you're here, though, you seem to know a lot. Mm. Have you ever heard of something called Sunset Vermilionite? Ah, the variety of Plostrite used in the Jade Chamber, yes? There is some mention of it in the Seven Mountain Treatises, when activated, Sunset Vermilionite rises up all the way into the clouds. It's very rare indeed. As far as the records show, virtually all Sunset Vermilionite in existence has been mined and taken possession of. Oh. But the Feiyun Commerce Guild would know far more about this than I do. Of course they would. Okay then, let's go ask at the Feiyun Commerce Guild. Okay, and we have a pretty lady to come along. Thanks, Baiju! You're quite welcome. Good luck to you all. And if there's anything further you need from me, just come to the Boo Boo Pharmacy. Yeah, we might need more of that food earlier for Shenhe later. So earlier in the storyline, when they talked about getting um, Shen Hu's help because she's an adoptus or whatever, you know, we can always call Xiao whenever we want to. Oh, we're here, right? Master Xingqiu, thank goodness <gasps> you're finally back. Xingqiu! Oh, why do I detect an urgency in your voice? The guild has had a whole string of strange orders in recently. Everyone's been completely caught off guard. Oh god, someone's being weird again. Your father gave me specific instructions to ask you to stay and help out if I happen to see you. I see. Have someone sort the orders by type for now. I'll deal with them myself shortly. 
Oh, how wonderful. Thank you, Master. With you on the job, I can breathe a sigh of relief. Reliable. Hey, Xingqiu. Glad you're here. We want to ask you for some information. Traveler, Paimon, please wait a moment. Shu, I need to entertain some guests. Please continue with your work for the time being, and we'll discuss the matter of the Guild's orders in more detail later on. Understood, Master Xingqiu. Then I will leave you in peace. I wasn't counting on finding you here today. What's going on? And how, pray tell, may I be of service? Xingqiu, have you ever heard of Sunset Vermilionite? If anyone knows anything in this world, it'll be Xiong Li. But besides Xiong Li, I, I think Xingqiu knows a lot. Oh, I see. So you've entered Lady Ningguang's contest as well. Uh-oh, as well? As well? Oh, mean... no. The truth is, the Feiyun Commerce Guild is in possession of some Sunset Vermilionite. But only one piece. We are holding it on behalf of someone who has asked us to put it up for auction. And a lot of interested parties have already come to us inquiring about the price. At the end of the day, it all comes down to supply and demand. In this <gasps> case, I'm guessing the final transaction price may be in excess of 500 million mora. I have barely a million mora right now. 500 million?! Uh, yeah, no. Honestly, I would recommend that you don't bother bidding on this one. The price is greatly inflated. Greatly is un understated. Greatly is understated. Oh my god. But without any sunset vermilionite. Don't mm. panic. I don't suppose you ever heard of Seagazer? Nope. Who? <laughs> well, Seagazer was once very close to Mountain Shaper. But if I am not mistaken, he has already passed away. Yes, precisely. I didn't know anyone else knew about him. Impressive. According to records of drifting clouds, Seagazer once built an abode to store his rarest and most exquisite treasures, among which was some sunset vermilionite. After Seagazer passed, the abode was abandoned, and its location was lost to time. Luckily, I came into possession of a stack of folk history books just recently. They make some oblique references to this lost abode, and after cross-referencing them against each other, I'm now fairly certain that it is situated in the Lisha area. Man, reading always comes in handy. That's great! Um, but is it really okay for us to just go and take his treasure? Wouldn't it be a little, you know, disrespectful with him being an adeptus? <laughs> Fair question. Hm. You needn't worry. As far as I understand, Seagazer was very open-minded. Even while he was alive, he wouldn't have let something like this bother him. That's convenient. Open-minded? I have not heard of Seagazer being described in this way before. May I ask where you read that? Just a rumor I heard out in the mountains. <sighs> All right then, let's go. I love how she was just matter-of-fact in his face and then, bye. <laughs> hmm. There's something about this young lady that reminds me of a good friend of mine. Chong Yung? Oh, I almost forgot. Adepti abodes tend to have very ingenious designs, especially when it comes to their defense mechanisms. Plus, it's likely to be crawling with monsters after being abandoned for so long. So please, be very careful. Okay, we will be. Thanks, Xingqiu. Thank you. here, but Paimon doesn't see anything. What the? Hmm. This place was hidden using a special Adepti art. But now that I have removed it, we can inspect the area more closely. Useful. Wow, that's amazing! Yep, let's Hey, look! Is that a new Sealy over there? <gasps> I 
got to here and then disappeared. She... Uh, what? Weren't we at a waterfall just now? How did we suddenly end up here? Pretty. Oh, so many clouds. It feels like we're high up in the sky. Hmm. I believe this is the abode of that Adeptus. With any luck, the sunset Vermilionite we're looking for should be in here. Really? Let Paimon see! Huh? Isn't that the Sealy from before? Look, it's gone and snuck beneath the cloud! And now Follow that Paimon it. takes a closer look, the rocks and trees here don't seem complete. Oh, could there be something below the clouds? What do you think, Shenher? These are not real clouds. They are the product of an Adepti art used for spatial partitioning. If we want to go down, we must first destroy the mechanism that is maintaining the Adepti art. All right, then let's do it! I sense the presence of monsters in this place. I don't know where they are hiding, so we'd better be careful. Is this it? Is this the Sunset Vermilionite? How are you supposed to carry this back? It's so huge! That's true, but... Paw Strait doesn't float until it's activated. It may look different from most ordinary stones, but it weighs around the same amount. Only after being activated does Paw Strait reveal its true nature, breaking free from the shackles of the mortal realm and ascending up into the heavens. Interesting. Wow, Shenha. You seem to know everything about this. Only because my master is fond of chatting about these things. The moment she has some time to spare, she'll come straight for me and start telling story after story. I don't care for her stories most of the time. I certainly didn't expect them to ever come in handy like this. I wonder who this master is. Hold on a sec! Paimon just realized some. If we activate it here, there's no way we'll be able to get it back to the site, right? Heck, we'll be dragged up into the sky too! But if we don't activate it, how else are we going to lift it? This ro Don't worry. I can handle the weight quite easily. What? Are you sure? Uh, be careful. Please don't worry. I'm well aware that a plostrite sample this large must be highly valuable. I will be gentle with it and make sure it does not get damaged. It's your safety you have to be careful of. My safety? Yeah. That's right! Paimon's sure you can handle it and everything. But if something this heavy lands on you, you're gonna get yourself hurt, no matter who you are. She's right. You gotta be extra careful when lifting heavy objects. It's just common sense. Oh my god. Hmm. Is it now? Hmm. Well then, thank you. I'll go on ahead with the plostrite. Let's meet at the building site later. She just... Can lift it up and just. How is Shenhe able to carry that huge rock all by herself? Huh? Did... Adept has super strength much? We can't slow down yet. Let's go meet her at the building site. Oh my God! I can't believe my eyes. How can she lift that massive rock all by herself? She's got to be one of those adept eyes, surely. That's what it seems. Oh, mighty Adeptus, please give me your blessing so that in the coming year I may reap a more bountiful salary. This is top tier in size and quality, and the condition it's in is quite simply immaculate. Congratulations, this item is approved for submission. I'm going to award you full marks for the sunset from- My name isn't important. I'm not even here to compete. I was just delivering this for some other people. They should be here any minute now. Shenha! And Ningguang's little helper! Ah, so you're the ones behind this. No wonder. The rarest talent turns in the rarest plostrite specimen. Yes, we are the rarest talent. Thank you. But I have to correct you on one point. It's not helper. It's secretary. Hmm. Fair. <laughs> okay then, Miss Secretary. What do you think of the rock we found? Pretty amazing, right? In truth, it is the finest piece of plostrite we have received so far. If everything goes according to plan, we will use this piece in the foundation of the Jade Chamber, which will enable us to proceed to the next stage of construction. As a side note, Lady Ningguang has rented some dwellings in the nearby area to serve as accommodations for the contestants. If you need a place to rest, Food? you are welcome to stay there. 
Now, please excuse me. As you can see, there is still a lot of work to do on the building site. Shenhua! Shenhua! Just now on the way over, pretty much everyone was singing your praises! Oh, really? What kind of reaction is that? So strange. Aren't you happy about it? Whenever Paimon gets praised, Paimon Aww. can't help but hold their head up high and break into a big, smug smile! Oh, God. I've had similar compliments before. They call me an adeptus, treat me with great deference and respect, as if I'm set apart from the common folk. Yeah, cause that's how adept I are. At least the ones we've met are pretty unique and reclusive too. Way different than normal people. Yeah. But uh, I am not... Uh... Shana? I'm fine. I've been exerting myself quite a lot ever since we set foot in that abode. Uh, I'm just a little fatigued. I mean, you carried that huge ass rock over for us, so. Um, well, Byron said that there are some makeshift hotels we can use, right? Let's go check in and take a rest. Food? <sighs> no need. I simply need to find myself a secluded place in the wilderness to sit and meditate in silence. Fair. You can't do that. It's dangerous out in the wild on your own. I'm pretty sure she could take care of herself. When you're hungry, you go eat something tasty. Mm. And when you're tired, you go lie down in a mm. nice, comfy bed. All right? Seriously, don't punish yourself like this. Guess accommodations are far more comfortable than the wilderness. Okay. If you insist. Great! Now we're talking. Let's head to our hotel. Time to scout. Hi there! Checking in, are we? You're just in time. We only have two rooms left. Perfect. Since this was chosen as the building site for the new Jade Chamber, we've had a constant stream of people in this area. And not just workers, either. Visitors, business people, Tourism? tea sellers, all sorts. So. Business is booming for me today. Very few vacancies. You're lucky you got here when you did. Well, good. Great! One of your rooms is still being cleaned. I, I guess it should be ready within the hour. The other room is just at the door on the left. My man. Here are your keys. All right. Hope you enjoy your stay. Please excuse me. I'll leave you to it. Good. Shenha, you should go get some rest. Until the other room's ready. Paimon's gonna go see if there's anything good to eat around good. here. <laughs> Paimon couldn't help but notice one of the guests walk in with a huge grilled chicken drumstick before. Ooh. Let's buy one for Shenhua too. She can have it as a midnight snack. Or save it for breakfast tomorrow. Haven't you learned that she eats glazed lilies? <sighs> All right. I will head to my room for now. If you need anything, don't hesitate to disturb me. I'm a light sleeper. I will hear if you knock on the door. Mm-hmm. See you tomorrow. Hey! Isn't that Cloud Retainer? Oh, God. What's she doing here? Ah, <sighs> <sighs> master, master, master. Let's go and say hi. Oh, do we have to? Okay, fine. <laughs> Yes, yes. Making you <laughs> climb cliffs and stuff. More speed. One trusts you have met Shen He. So, are you getting along quite well? Mm-hmm. So far, so good. Yeah. So, you know Shen He too, Cloud Retainer? Naturally. 
Save for Ganyu, who spends the majority of her time in Liyue Harbor. All the Adepti living today are acquainted with Shen He, to some degree. Cool! So, what's her Adeptus name anyway? <laughs> Calling her Shen He feels kind of friendly, but also kind of disrespectful. So Paimon's thinking maybe it'd be better if we called her by her Adeptus name instead. Oh, Paimon, you're in for a surprise. Her Adeptus name? Why, pray tell, would Shen He have an Adeptus name? Yeah. Uh, don't all Adepti have a special title they go by? Mm -hmm. On this latter point, you are correct. However, Shen He is human. Oh, oh, right. Wait, what? I was... I knew that ahead of time. What? You knew already? <sighs> so is Paimon the only one who didn't know? It's funny, though, when you leave your friends in the dark. Do you mean to say that she presents differently from ordinary human beings? Um, yeah. Well, to start with, her problem-solving methods are... extremely direct. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. She was like this all those years ago when one first met her. In this respect, she has not changed. One first found Shanha by chance in a cave. <gasps> One was passing by and sensed the presence of a god's remains. What? Being of an ever-vigilant disposition, One entered immediately to inspect the scene. Inside was Shanha, then oh aged god. around six years old. In her hand, she held a dagger with which she was confronting a monster that was the god's remains incarnate. That's a crazy backstory. That sounds so dangerous. Yeah. Reminds me of, like, Mikasa from Attack on Titans. When one arrived, she had already been locked in confrontation with this monster for several days. <gasps> Most mortal children are fragile, both physically and mentally, yeah. and are highly reliant on their parents for survival. But not so her. Wow. That she was able to endure such terrible danger was due not only to her strong willpower, but also to the bloodlust and homicidal instinct with which she was born. That explains a lot. One dealt with the monster, yet she still refused to lower her guard. She even pointed her dagger in one's direction and remained ready to strike. That's how Only good. after she was satisfied that one had no intention to cause her harm did she finally relent. She then passed out without uttering a single word. I mean, she was constantly fighting with this monster, so she would definitely pass out once she feels safe. In other words, if you hadn't passed by that day, Shenhua might have... Yeah. Not necessarily. Upon one's arrival, one could sense that the god's wrath was gradually receding. Even had the stalemate continued, one suspects that Shen He may have still emerged the victor of the confrontation. Mm. That's still so dangerous, though! Why was a tiny little kid battling against the wrath of a god in the first place? Good question, Paimon. Alas, the mortal world is rife with suffering of every kind. And she had experienced her fair share of this, even at a tender age. Seeing that she was homeless, one decided to adopt her. Okay. Indeed, it is one to whom she refers. Xian He has an extraordinary constitution, making her well adapted to practicing the Adepti arts. All the Adepti cherished her talents, and so we were willing to train her. We? Wow. It's a whole family raising a child thing going on here. However, her homicidal urges did not subside with age. Rather, they grew stronger day by day. Moon Carver once performed a divination for her. He declared that her fate is to bear the curse of calamity. Consumed by malevolent energy, she is prone to bring harm to those around her. Such is the magnitude of the danger this poses, that her soul must be bound with red ropes 
to keep her homicidal instinct at bay. The red ropes have indeed served to keep her calmer and more content. They also seem to have rendered her somewhat inexpressive. I can see that. Perhaps the red ropes are so powerful that they have suppressed some of her other emotions as well. Something that sounds too good to be true usually has a downside like this. It is only by fate that people's paths may cross. Now that Shen He's path has crossed with yours, please be sure to treasure the gift that fate has given you, and take good care of her. Oh, now Paimon gets it. You came out here to check up on Shen He because you were worried about her, didn't you? Huh. You dare draw such a facile conclusion on the nature of one's present excursion? Incorrect. The truth is that while Liyue Harbor may seem peaceful today, danger is always lurking in the shadows. Ningguang once made a bold assertion that this is to be the era of the contract between Liyue and the humans. Well... One is most curious to observe how she will respond to the coming storm. What coming storm? If she handles it admirably, one is willing to be a witness to her achievements. But if she does not, the Adepti shall not hesitate to seize control. Oh man, it's this all over again. Let us conclude our conversation here for today. One has occupied enough of your time, and night is approaching. Be sure to get ample rest. So, Shen He isn't an Adeptus after all. She just grew up around the Adepti. Oh, no wonder she doesn't like being treated as an Adeptus. Having everyone falling over themselves to show their respect all the time must be kind of hard to deal with. 